Sometimes you need to take control to make a difference. That's why with FlexPath from Capella University, you're in control. Set your own deadlines and leverage your experience to move at a pace that works for you. Discover a different way forward at capella.edu. Sign up with BetMGM Sports using code CHAMPION200 and win $200 in free bets when you place a $10 money line wager on any Major League Baseball game and either team hits a home run. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. Virginia only. New customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-888-532-3500. Hi there, I am Adam Kirbas, and this is my novel, Life Choices. In every adolescent's life, there comes a moment when he tries to discover his world. Where are the born that there is? How far does life go? He tries to understand it. These are thoughts who, who keep pestering an adolescent life. The discovery, not only of his own body, but as well as of his world view, where his self-perception tilts quite frequently between a perceived superiority and a perceived inferiority. Frederick Malham was no exception. He was attending a private school. He was one of the few poor people, students, who had the chance to go to and, and receive better education. This is a one in a million chance. This is something really valuable. Of course, with this chance comes the proper notion, the understanding that this is actually one of the few opportunities only a few get. To understand the value of it is pretty much difficult because it would mean that you have to face your own social background, your circumstances and parents as well as society remains mute about them. They don't want to talk about them. They rather want to keep silent. Poverty is something you feel ashamed of. You don't want to mention it. Hmm. Poverty means something people can actually ac- accuse you. There, are still, there is still a perception in society that poverty would be self-afflicted. Indeed, some of it is true. Indeed. If you waste your income on drugs and booze, if you waste your income on gambling, or if you're just a bum, then poverty strikes you hardest. But there is as well as a mental inclination to poverty. This perception, this attitude of the poor man, the attitude that the world would owe him something. This derives from Marxist philosophy that we would live in a world of exploitation and that the few, the so-called 1% on top that they would live off the 99% of the bottom. This notion that the world is unfair, unjust. And because of this, 
one things that they are in title to in title to what actually a good life one would say but many do not even have a notion what good life is what does good life consist wealth money plenty of power to need to his health family working family relationships what is wealth what consists wealth there are many there are var various answers however when a poor man sees the struggle of life that he or she has to work their ass off then there comes a perception an image of the wealthy who would be sitting on a yacht who would be enjoying life while one self has to endure hardship one self would have to work hard to make ends meet and this poor man's notion is poison poison for social upheaval poison for climbing the social ladder poison for um, ambition that you get your things together and accomplish something no one one still assumes that the world is unfair unjust because the poor man f- thinks he could be wealthy as well he would be even a good wealthy man a philanthrop someone who would take care of the poor what do wealthy people know about life this is what he thinks we can be wealthy as well the key understanding and the key messages they do not want to do away with society they do not want to do away with the so called capitalist system because what comes thereafter nothingness sameness this is an appealing even for a poor man no his this comfort with society derives from the notion that he has to start from the bottom while others seem to be far ahead and far above him at the height of all those others who have already accomplished him something seems to be mind boggling and this leads to unrest this leads to hate hatred against against the wealthy hatred against every everyone and everything who seems to do better and this poor man's men tellity grabs hold of everyone and it grabbed hold of frederick he understood that there is a invisible border between him and his fellow classmates he understood that things are different and he thought of himself as life as being the one who is being done unjust he did not see the great opportunity that this chance of attending a private school would or comes with no he only saw that he has to struggle more as the others that he has to start from the back and not from this from the front and he felt that life would be unfair unbearably unfair and
and he lost all ambition. He didn't want to try anymore. He didn't want to cherish the great gift he had anymore. He wanted to have what all others have. He still thought that his true parents would be watching him. He still thought that his true parents would be special. They can't be poor people because this notion got hold of him that poor people are in a way or another responsible for their own misery. This false understanding, this idiotic understanding, yet it has permeated all trials of society, even poor people assume that they are in they are entirely responsible for their own fate. However, Frederick in some occasions imagined his father or his mother having a family of their own where they are wealthy, where they have anything, where they do not lack anything, where they can live in beautiful suburban homes, where they do not have to count coins, where they can eat whatever they want, where they do not have to eat leftovers his mother brings home from the restaurant, where they can get presents, not only to birth days, but at the end of every week, where there is a special day, the day his mother always announces that when she gets her paycheck at the end of the month, this is always a special day in the family Malhelm. This is when they are allowed to buy a little bit more. When they get something new, something to wear, or before Christmas, when when her when Frederick's mother gets additional an additional Christmas bonus because she's doing overtime. These are all special occasions in the family Malham. And Frederick assumes that for wealthy people this is these special days would be never ending. Frederick sees wealth through the eyes of someone who is troubled by his own circumstances. And wealth means lack of worry, inner peace. One can do whatever he wants without this nagging, without this sometimes bothering and excruciating counting of coins just live life as it is. However, Frederick got fed up with his life. He didn't do his homeworks properly anymore. He didn't prepare for exams anymore. He just didn't care anymore. The teachers in the a private school noticed it. Some of them from the wealthy upper class, others from the middle class thought of it as some dire circumstances in his social milieu. Probably his mother is, do, is not doing well. Probably there are some issues in the home or the place he's been living. They were scared. They were some sort of compassionate, compassionate, understanding. They 
tried to understand. And yet they did not see through this rebellion of the poor man that he feels deceived. This belief in the great conspiracy, the wealthy are, are taking advantage of us. They just did it away with some minor upheavals in Frederick's life. But then they more and more understood that his behavior is persisting. It doesn't stop. They inquired about his mother. They knew him because Frederick was one of the few who ever attended, attended such a noble uh, school. Of course, these people were curious, curious like someone who goes into a zoo and watches an exotic animal. This is how curious they were about the life of Frederick, about what he is doing, what his siblings are, his mother, how he's working. And some of them imagined what life would be if you have to work almost 12 hours a day in a restaurant and still having to feed your children from leftovers. But they more and more inquired that his mother is actually doing well. So they assumed that Frederick's rebellion probably has something to do with his hormones. You know, they assume that poor people, they have to be independent very early on because their mothers or, or their parents in general, they are working all day long or almost all day long. And the children are all left to themselves. So those teachers assumed, well, he's probably premature. He is already far developed and this is some sort of hormone junk which bars his way. And they understood, of course, that this is very dangerous because as a poor boy, they knew Frederick has only one chance, one. That is all. Life does give you many chances, it is true, but only a few are able to grab those chances. And those teachers rightly knew that this school, that this proper education is the one, ta one life time chance of Frederick. If he loses that, there is nothing and nobody who can help him. His life could be gone. His peers, his classmates, they had ample room and space for error. Despite the fact that proper development consists of errors and that someone learns of these errors and that learning through errors is the great teacher and benefits one's development. Yet only a few have the privilege to error and still land on their feet. Frederick was no, no, not one of them. And Frederick himself did not understand that this is a dangerous path he is following. That he 
is losing a life. A time chance. His teachers, they tried to help him. They were understandable. Still compassionate. They wanted to animate him. They even asked some of his classmates whether they can help him, whether they can hang out with him. But the requests of these classmates were like, as like an insult for Frederick because he could not invite them home in the hood. Some of his classmates had some stories about poor people, of course. They did not know what do they know because they live all in gated communities and what they knew about poor people was rather from the movies but yet everyone had a, had a story to tell about a poor guy about about the delivery guy about the guy f who works in his father's company about the dude who who brings the newspapers the morning papers what have you everyone of them had a story to tell a funny one maybe and these things were bothering for Frederick he could not socialize with his classmates he was rarely invited some of his classmates parents still had prejudices against poor people that they would be disease written and what have you so Frederick was lost behind help did not arrive his teachers tried to animate him in another way tried to help him they looked the other way when exams were due they tried to aid and assist him and when they saw that exams in exams or in homeworks that which he did not do they would look the other way they would give him good marks despite the fact that he would not bring in the motivation or the will anymore. They considered him mildly, compassionately. He will come back eventually. That's what they assumed. They only wanted to get him through this period, through this moment, and then he would be back on his feet again. This is jump, just a fad. This is just teenage rebellion. This is what they assumed, what they knew from their own lives. But no, no, no matter what they did, Frederick did not improve. At home, his mother was still bragging about her, her son, that her, her son would be special, that her, that her family would be special. She hid the rather meek doings of her, of her other children. She even lied and this to the un annoyance of all others or in some occasions Miss Malhelm would even claim that only Frederick would be her child and all the others would be adopted and she only takes care of them until their parents get them and the teachers who were worried about Frederick tried to bring him tried to help tried to help him tried to talk to his mother 
And when Miss Malham for the first time heard about the worries of her, of Frederick's teachers, she was scared stiff. She was horrified because she always thought that Frederick would be doing well. She always thought no matter what, he will accomplish everything. But hearing this, that he would not put in any effort, that he would be lazy, that he would not prepare for exams and that he could lose his lifetime chance made Frederick's mother afraid because she had already imagined that once when Frederick succeeds in school he would go to college he would become wealthy and take his mother with him she had already imagined a beautiful house with a beautiful lawn somewhere in the suburban area she had already made even concrete plans that she would even have servants i mean what did she know about be about wealthy people she saw them in the movies she read about them in cheap pulp fiction it was a flashy taste she applied however but she had already set her mind on it and now she hears that frederick is not doing well she immediately talked to him she never did before for frederick she was a distant woman she he had no close emotional bond to her but she, she tried to talk sense to her son. You have to be more careful. This is your life time chance. This is your only chance. You have to, you have to, you have to. Always this force, Frederick thought of her. Always this demand from him. Society demands for him. He has to put in an extra effort while his classmates are all doing fine. He has to work his ass off while his classmates live in beautiful suburban homes. He could not bear it anymore. And he did not take his mother seriously because for him, she was not his real mother. For him, she was something distant, a nobody, someone she, he did not care about. She could not be his mother. Frederick was convinced of it. So she did not heed her advice. And things continued in a downward spiral class after class the teachers looked the other way they didn't know what to do with him anymore they didn't know how to help him anymore and in the end they gave up and because Frederick was one of the few poor students who had ever attended attended this elite school they refrained from giving him bad marks. They wanted him to pass the classes. His failure should not be on them. They feared or they assumed that they would owe it to poor people because they were privileged, what have you. So. Frederick was in his senior year. His marks were average. And he did not show any, any ambition, 
any motivation, while his classmates appeared for applied for elite colleges. Frederick did none of it. He didn't care about the world anymore. And because of his attitude, because of his way, his classmates even ex excluded him furthermore. Because the, his classmates told their parents about the diver downward spiral of Frederick. The one boy who was a stupid superstar because he was poor still grabbed their attention. And then more and more Frederick's classmates, parents feared the disease of poverty that could grab his their children as well. Some of them even wanted Frederick to be excluded from the school. He should go back where he came from. We don't need these kinds of folks. But nothing happened. So his senior year, everyone is applying for college. Frederick's notes, grades were not good anymore. It was pretty much clear. He would not be admitted to a good university. The only thing that could save him was the good representation of the school. But yet, the big issue was tuition fees. And without good grades, it is, things are difficult. But Frederick still assumed, especially when his classmates were talking about their parents who were former graduates, who were graduates of elite universities. And because of this, they would be with one foot already in that elite university. Because of this, their admission would be easier. Frederick thought of his own parents as well, whether they went to elite universities, whether they had accomplished anything. And he was sure they have. And he was still waiting for a sign of them. He was still waiting for his parents to barge in and save him, giving meaning, understanding what this all means. And he was waiting. He was waiting and waiting. So the end of the year came. School was always almost over. Frederick in the end, with the assistance of some of his teachers, applied for colleges. But it was too late. And those colleges to whom he was admitted. They were merely slightly better than community college. However, someone for someone in Frederick's position, for someone in Frederick's family who had a lot of high school dropouts, even community college was a high social climb. No one had graduated from college so far, but for Frederick, it was an insult. He only wanted the best. He wanted to attend those elite universities without actually doing something for, her, for it. He still fought his parents who had 
to be former graduates or who had to be graduates from elite universities that they would sooner or le later call him and he would be admitted he would get get a message from elite universities whatever they has to be he still thought life has been so unfair to me it has to pay me back it has to there is no other alternative i have to be reimbursed for the loss i took but nothing happened frederick did not attend those colleges he was admitted to so when his classmates after school attended their schools their elite universities frederick stayed at home he told his mother that it is only a matter of time until those elite universities would call him he only have to be wait they wanna figure out whether i'm patient he said to her this would be the final test you know how wealthy people are you know how they like to play games mrs malham did not know any thing about about the practice of application in colleges she didn't know anything she was her a college drop out her self her parents had barely barely basic education she didn't know anything about it and still her hopes were on, were on frederick frederick was her last straw frederick this brilliant boy of whom his life she never really pa took was her reason to be was the reason she gained strength every day in the morning and worked in these restaurants got up washed dishes and ate the leftovers of others frederick supposed to help her elevate her from this life and then life would re pay her she would live in fine homes frederick would be a prominent boy a prominent man who had accomplished a lot who would be famous and she would live through his fame through him she was sure of it and because of this because she didn't want to to give up this dream she let him pass she give frederick a pass if he needs more time he should get more time if he needs more more time to think if he wants to wait he should wait so much depended for her on frederick she didn't know when what would happen when her dream would would be shattered when all of this would come to an end she didn't know what to make of of her self but she was one more she was as sure of one thing that she cannot continue doing this she felt her bones aching she felt that life is sucked out of her that she did not that she do not does not feel the strength anymore to continue because to continue in a in a job where you have no perspective whatsoever the same task like every day 
without hope of improvement, need a lot of mental power. That's the only, only thing that keeps you standing. Not your physical strength, but your mental abilities to coax yourself, to make yourself believe that this is only transitory. Even if it has been going on for years and no end in sight, you still have to convince yourself, coax yourself, live in a delusion. One day, one day all will be over. And she clung on this notion. Things got nasty because Mrs. Malham had bragged about her, her son, her Frederick, her only son, despite she had many children more. She bragged about everywhere at the bakery, at her, her friends. And she had this condescending air that she would be better as all others. And now, after the rumor spread more and more, People knew that Frederick actually did not attend elite university, that Frederick sits at home as a bum, like a bum. These people who have been listening of all this arrogant talking, of all this diminishing of that woman, paid her back. They kept inquiring about Frederick. What is your boy doing? I heard he, he's at home. Or some nasty comments with, with, which would pretend helpfulness. I know a, a guy who needs some helping hands. He's a, he, he works in a ditch. Or I know a guy in a restaurant who needs a cleaner. So if your boy is interested, I can fix you up. Because what are friends for? And these things were nasty. And they bothered Mrs. Malhelm for the first time after years after years she dreamed a dream she felt being dragged down to reality again more and more this notion took over that nothing good will ever happen to her not to her, nor her children. And that Frederick, with all her high hopes, in the end turned out to be as like as her self. And that she could not do anything about it. In this moment, her hatred against her children flared up again. She remembered the first time when she was grabbed by this hatred and almost ran off leaving her children behind. Now she thought about that time and she regretted that she didn't do it and she regretted that, that she didn't just pack her, her her stuff and walk away. Maybe, maybe she would have done better and wouldn't have chased after an illusion and now it is all gone. This was a heavy slap for her. Unbearable. Because what now? She more and more knew that Frederick's staying at home was the admission of failure that he would never get out of there 
and that he would be like all those men who came to her, knocked her up, lived off her savings and incomes for a couple of weeks and then disappeared. And she looked at Frederick, her son, with deep disgust and hatred. It's time to get your checking account to zero with free checking from PenFed. That's zero ATM fees, zero balance requirements, and zero time spent waiting for your paycheck to direct deposit because you can receive it up to one day early. Open your account with just $25 and see how big zero can be. Apply online today at penfed.org slash free checking. Early direct deposit eligibility may vary between pay periods and timing of payers' funding. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. B-sides, rare finds, secret shows. Whether it's a must-see concert or a must-have coin, curious types crave interesting experiences. Bittrex is a cryptocurrency exchange empowering traders to feed their curiosity. With hundreds of trading pairs, Bittrex offers a platform for next big thing discoverers to create the crypto experiences they've been looking for. Trade beyond the trend at bittrex.com. It's your move.